to help each other to overcome and change. Your patience is a virtue, but this is incredibly needed in discipling relationships. And this is a very, we need to always remind ourselves, patience is one of the key ingredients to make your discipling work. Okay? So, uh, it's not easy, you know, uh, but if you see what you have done, you know, the time you spend and seeing life change, it's very satisfying. And that's why we are so committed to this. Because uh, and Jesus spending time with his uh, 12 disciples, seeing their lives transform and change. And uh, it's very uh, satisfying for us as well as a Christian. And uh, we're looking forward to those times. When we see the people that we pour our life into, they can really change and become more like Christ. And, amen. and first thing, how are we going to train them? It's that like we don't, you know, train them to tell them what to do. You know, there's a lot of people trying to do that. And that's very ineffective. It's just very much like teaching our own little kid, you know. I, you can tell them exactly what to do, but it's a quick fix. But uh, long term, uh, it's not going to last. So to become like Jesus, you have to train them how to think like Jesus. And that is uh, a long process. You know, that takes a lot of patience. So uh, let's read one scripture. You know, in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. So since uh, uh, we can read in English or Khmer, anyone? <coughs> Uh, first Corinthians, second Corinthians, chapter four, verse four. โอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเคโอเค
terrible, you know. So you just feel terrible. Or, you know, the, you can stay faithful and full of faith and keep the perspective. Believing it's going to take time, you know, patience to put through the change. So you, by having a, a joyful and, and faithful perspective, you know, you can really inspire the other person. You will help them to have faith too. So, so this is one of the important things, you know, as a disciple, we need to be uh, full of faith when you're trying to help others. And I think, you know, it's like we need to train people, you know, righteously. And one of the most damaging aspects of poor leadership is just being harsh. Uh, I think over here, some of them have been gone through uh, before Henry Creek's time, right? Uh, I think a few of them, like Rani and Janti and you, uh, I'm not sure. I, I did that, you know, in Thailand, I remember my disciple, you know, from coming from overseas and helped me. And I was so afraid of him to the point that you know, I want to be a good disciple in chain, and by the point that I was sitting here having a discipling time, you know, how, how, you know, how afraid I was, my, my, my muscle in my face started to shake, <laughs> tremble, because I was afraid, you know, what are you going to tell me and say to me? This is literally how, how far we have gone through, you know, and being harsh. You're not going to learn anything, you know, you just persevere through those times. Luckily, I still remain faithful. <laughs> so, I, I know, and, 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 and of course, people want to try their best to help one another like Christ, but sometimes we can overdo it to the point of just being harsh. But a lot of time, you know, when people are not doing well spiritually, when you tell them to have some challenges trying to help them to obey Jesus, now Matthew 28, you need to teach them to, to obey everything, right? So when you want to help them to obey everything, when they don't want to do it, you know, they come back and say, oh, you're being harsh. But actually, it just, it can be just, they, they didn't want to change, you know. So you have to really, uh, you know, when, of course, you know, we need to be gentle, need patience, we cannot be harsh, but at the same time, we also cannot make excuses for not wanting to change by blaming, you know, for not willing to change uh, uh, as being harsh. So we don't want to confuse being harsh with just being honest. You know, the important thing, we don't need to be honest, you know, discipling relationship, telling people the truth in love, uh, at the same time, uh, not be harsh. And then I think that if we are not telling people the truth about how they need to change, just being in Thailand, so green jai, I'm not sure in Khmer what they say. Yeah, Kraichet, very similar. In English, they have no such words, but it's okay, good for them, you know. And Kraichet, lack of leadership, you know. It's just as bad, look at the result. If there's no leadership, the result, they're going to be leaving God, doing the all kinds of things. You know, they have the exactly the same result as having a harsh leadership. Or even worse. I don't know. I'm not sure how to compare them. But they are all bad. You know. So, there's, you know, we need to train people righteously patiently and not harsh, That's very, and honestly, that is very important. Uh, on the topic of training righteously, we need to also keep confidentiality. So when we talk about people's lives, how people to change, you know, uh, there's a lot of uh, sensitive things. You know, about the finance, about the dating, about the marriage, you know. Uh, a lot of things are, are, are very sensitive, you know. And then we need to keep those things. And then when we, we need to apply those, sometimes we just no idea. Uh, when I tell this to someone, you know, when other people about somebody's life, you know, in the area of 
sen uh, sensitive issues. Mm -hmm. You have to think why you do that. You need to apply the golden rule. You know, sometimes this is, this is quite difficult for leaders actually. You know, sometimes we're confused about. Sometimes we have so much pressure. We just want to talk. You know. Or, or that, or when we talk about all these things, we need to think about, you know, why am I thinking about sharing this thing? You know, will my sharing benefit the one about whom I'm sharing? Or will my sharing benefit the one with whom I'm sharing? You know, and, uh, and then think about the golden rule if the situation is reversed. Do I want the same thing to be shared about me? So if it's okay, you don't feel good about it, yeah, go ahead and share. If you don't feel good about that, you know, it's a big gray area. Maybe it'd be good for us to, you know, kind of like a keep confidentiality. So this is uh, one area I think that we need to be careful, you know, and as, uh, especially as uh, if you are leaders and helping a, a, a number of people, you know, you need to really think about this. Okay, another thing about being uh, deciding is being patient is to leave room for God. This is one of the best scriptures in the whole Bible about uh, having great patience. You know, this is Second Timothy. I'm not sure there's any scripture that top this, but this is a uh, Golden Ferguson favorite, and it has also become. My favorite. <laughs> so, Second Timothy chapter two, verse twenty-three, twenty-six. Can someone read that? <coughs> yeah, you can read. <coughs> Second Timothy chapter two, verse twenty-three. Don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments, because you know they produce quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome. But must be kind to everyone, able to teach, not resentful. Opponents must be gently instructed in the hope that God will grant them repentance, leading them to a knowledge of the truth, and that they will come to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil who has taken them captive to do his will. Yeah. You know, when Apostle Paul write this, you know. When we talk about arguments, you're always foolish and stupid. Can you imagine someone telling you you're foolish and stupid? Oh, this is being harsh. No, it's just being honest. You know, there's just a, just there's a situation. You know, we need to say the right word, the right meaning, with a very, how do I say, calm, <laughs> you know, very calm. Okay, this is. You talk about don't have anything to, be, uh, to do with foolish and stupid arguments, you know, uh, and because that because you know they produce quarrel. When we are supposed to help another person spiritually, sometimes it ends up in quarrel. I, I, I face that quite often. You know, I, I'm being unspiritual. I'm not following these scriptures. You know, I hope this scripture I can remember all the time. You know, when that happens, sometimes our I say uh, when people say things. Uh, um, attack you, you know, for trying to help them. And say things kind of like attack you personally, and you, you, you want to react, you know. And what the Bible teaches us, you know, when people, your opponents, you know, when he do that to you, what you need to do? You need to be calm, okay? You need to be calm, right? Let me see, let me read that scripture. The Lord's servants must not be cross, but must be kind to everyone, even if it's not sinful. Opponents must be generally instructed. So, opponents, people oppose you. You have to not strongly instruct them. You know, who is more strong? You know, you're strong, I'm also strong. No, no, that's not what the Bible teaches. You know, the Bible teaches if the opponents are strong, you know, you, 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 you need to stay humble and be gentle. You know, when people attack you, don't take it personally. Uh, it's really that problem unless you react. 
you make it yours. So we need to, you know, I think this has been a challenge for uh, many people in leadership. Now when we're supposed to help people spiritually, not everyone, you know, not everyone will take it uh, positively. And how are you going to react? If you react in a way that we uh, take it personally, we're going to withdraw. You know, from that. And that's not God's plan. Now, God's plan is for us to grow and our patience. And at the same time, you have to have a perspective. You leave God room for God to see to let the person make the changes on his own. You know, we just need to say calmly, gently, and trust God. That's all we can do. We are not here in the mind control, you know, telling people what to do. And, you know, it's, it's up to them. We are just being an advisor. We try to do our best. That's what we we need to do. As a, uh, you know, I remember many times I I fall into this trap, and uh, and uh, I think a few months ago there's one brother who is quite close to me. Got really angry. I think he drink too much. He got angry. Hit the table. You know, talking to me, I was like a bit shocked. You know, but I I think I remember the scripture. You know, that day I was in, I was like, just being calm. I just listen. And as he about to leave, he got angry again. He hit the car. Uh, you know, uh, you know. I, I, I'm so glad I, I obeyed the scripture. You know, if I hit it back and say it back, you know, it's uh, it's just destructive. It's just destructive. Yeah. And then you know, the brother later on, you know, next day, he, a few days later, he apologized. Uh, you know, don't don't do this. You know, it happens to everyone, any times. You know, even now, even last month, two months. You know, it can happen any time. That's what you want. Your your phone is over there. Yeah. But anyway, so this is a very good scripture, very practical scripture. You know, I hope that you really uh, take it to heart because it's really uh, uh, effective. You know, it's very meaningful for us as a Christian. If you want really want to help someone uh, to grow spiritually, this has to be really at the, the heart. You know, trusting God and saying the words of the honesty, with patience, with gentleness. This is really the heart, the whole thing. It's a hard to decide thing. And I think about you know leaving room for this, for God is in the area of uh, communication. Uh, and uh, and uh, yeah, Gordon to talk about our communication has three different gear. Gear number one is just being quiet, reserved, you know. And, uh, and gear number two is you have to you know speak up, you know, talk to them, uh, confront the situation, but still calm, you know. And gear number three is that you explode. You know, a lot of us, we don't operate gear number two. We operate on gear number one. Just keep it there. Say something you don't like. You know, just keep it there. And then explode in gear number three. You know, we, we, we are in gear one and three, gear one and three. But actually, what we need is gear number two. You know, all the time, we need gear number two. We cannot operate in gear number one. We cannot operate in gear number three. But we have a, as a disciple, you know, in a disciple, we have to always operate in gear number two. Speak the truth in love. With honesty, directness. As address the issues straight on in a calm and reasonable, reasonable manner. So we need to train patiently, train righteously, and train without any hint of an argumentative spirit. So we need to pray, you know, and uh, pray that God will do the rest. So we just do our part, being patient, being righteous, not argumentative, being patient, you know, and then trust God. 
to do the rest. So if you're able to do this, you know, I think our discipling relationship will, will be very, very meaningful. You know, we will be very, very transform the lives of many people. We will not be just empty talk. We will not just hanging out together doing nothing. Not growing, not changing. You know, if we're able to capture the heart of the scripture, what God is trying to teach us, we will all grow to be more like Christ. That's what God's plan is for us. We, either we think, you know, the way Satan wants to think, or we think spiritually like Jesus. So if you want to grow to think more like Jesus, capture the heart, you know, what the Bible trying to teach for us to grow spiritually. Okay, next, uh, I'm going to cover the last chapter, you know, quickly, and then chapter 10 is about being a humble advisor. So when we, I know a lot of deciding relations about giving advisors, you know, but, you know, in the Bible, there's a lot of teaching. Some of them are very straightforward, you call explicit. Some of them are not so straightforward, you know, implied. So it's called implicit teaching. For example, you know, you know, like a, an explicit, not in, implicit, as something that is not very clear cut. You know, they only Christian. The Bible did not talk about that. You know? but you can imply from different verses in the Bible. You know, the Bible in Second Corinthians says it talks about you know you don't yoke together with unbelievers. So, so what kind of relationship is most yoke? You know, it did not say uh, is it, you know, clearly, but you know, there's none other than marriage relationship. You know, it's the most useful relationship. And Second Corinthians nine, you know, we talk about you know, Apostle Paul talk about having the right to take a believing wife. You know, uh, uh, just like uh, Peter and the Lord's brother and the rest of Apostle they have. You no, know, but he did not have. It. So, and then Second First Corinthians seven, he talk about. Uh, giving advice to the widow, they are free to remarry, but only you know, the one that belongs to the Lord. So he, he talked about the, the, the widow, did not talk about the, the man. Doesn't mean, you know, doesn't it mean the man is, can marry a woman that's not in the Lord. It, it doesn't mean that, you know, it's implied. So from all this, you can see that Christians need to marry only Christian, right? Very clear. Okay. And that will imply our dating practices. Why are you going to date someone non Christian? When you're supposed to date, marry only Christian. You know, it is implied. So some of the, the, you know, some of the advice you, you, know, you, you give is, is being implied, it's implicit, not so explicit. You know? So this is just one area, for example. And, then, uh, and uh, of course, you know, in dating, you also have dating guidelines, it's not rules or regulations that like spell out in the Bible. No, but we, in the kingdom, we, we do. You know, I hope that you guys start dating, and maybe sooner and later, we can have uh, some kind of more dating like guidelines. When I was uh, dating, you know, uh, we have a lot of good guidelines, but sometimes I was so prideful, I, I did not follow them. You know, I think I'm most spiritual, I'm older Christian, no, I know the Bible better than others. I just did one on one. Oh. Try that a few times. You're gonna fall. No, a couple of times. I'm ashamed to say that. You know. So, please, because the Bible, you know, I mean, did say that you know you have avoid any hint of immorality. It means. We, you know, I've got a guy of, you go to date, it's better, go a double day or triple day, you know, I mean, a group day. You know, it's good to double day, you can have a more, you know, can know each other better. You know, don't spend us, you know, I mean, just one-on-one, uh, -on -one, you know, and they, they, they create some, 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 some dangerous uh, situation. So the Bible did not give you exactly, you know, spell out the, the situation. But in this discipling relationship, there's a lot of advice, you know, it's implied, it's not, it's not like the Bible, let me open up this scripture, the Bible say that. No, you, you have to use the best judgment, you know, it's a lot about advice, you know. So you have the, that one is the explicit one, and then, uh, and, and, and then, 
And then another thing about taking advice is like asking permission. We are very confused. We used to think about getting advice with asking for permission. So uh, really, getting, giving advice, getting advice is not asking for permission. It, you know, and uh, we like to do that. Uh, uh, a disciple is one who offers counsel based on his or her knowledge of scripture, the people involved in, this, uh, in the circumstances. It is up to the disciple to consider the input, to be prayerful and make the decision of his own conviction. So we, you know, if people like to think of getting permission, so when the advice is given, as if it's a commission, which is not, but if they think that way, then when the outcome is not good, they tend to blame the disciples. You know, they're not, and they're not growing, they're not thinking. You know. so, so, at the same time, you know, sometimes uh, giving advice also may involve with a, a choice of right and wrong, as if, uh, the, the, the explicit cases. But well, sometimes it just involves in choices of being good, better, uh, the best. You know? And then sometimes we like to think, oh, it would be nice. Uh, everything was spelled out very clear cut, black and white. You know? But actually, in the Bible, it's not as clear cut. A lot of the things, it's kind of like, <coughs> how often are you going to meet on midweek? Which day are you going to meet? You know, discipling relation is it exactly one on one or group or whatever. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, a lot of things. No, I mean, not exactly so clear cut. You know, so it has a lot of room for you to 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 to, to explore and think about. It, you know, and uh, but in all cases, we need to remain biblically grounded and being practical and humble in giving those advice. Okay. And the last. Area I want to talk about is it uh, uh, one of is it one of the last areas and it's the second last area? Yeah. <coughs> oh, okay. Second last area I want to talk about is having being faith or opinion matter. So, so yeah, that's it. Most of us would like to. To, to, to have, there's no gray area, everything is clear cut, but God did not do that. No, maybe God did it for purpose, you know, not very clear cut, so that we will not be so dogmatic, and so that we will be more humble with each other, you know, listen to each other, talk to each other. There's not, some, some of the things, you know, it's not so clear cut. But in the Bible, there's something that's very clear cut, that's sinless, you know, there's a few lists here, is that the Bible, 1 Corinthians 6, Galatians 5, 2 Corinthians 3, you know, all those things, that there's not much room for you to have a variation of interpretation, you know, uh, about those uh, lists. There. But then, you know, at the same time, Romans 14, uh, Paul talks about, you know, uh, there, there has the room for, in the kingdom for difference in opinion. You know, and sometimes the food they eat, what kind of food they should or shouldn't, and, and, and there are many areas, you know, in the discipling relationship, I think when we talk about people's life, there are many things that fall in this Roman 14 area, and we, we, we should not be dogmatic about it, you know, and, and, and be patient, and, 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 and we need to really be sensitive and, and do all these things, and just give the best advice. And the area, I think, like food, some people are really like into food, and, and you eat something like this, uh, some people are just vegetarian, and you might, you know, I mean, uh, different people have different views, you know. So, uh, uh, I mean, the clothing, how you're going to wear, and what kind of clothes you wear, and, and, and you know, I mean, some, some of the area that how short the skirt going to be, you know, I mean, you measure exactly, you know, and uh, everybody has a different view, you know, and, 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 and even the movies, what kind of movies going to watch, is it, uh, uh, you know, uh, it, so you have to make a right judgment on your own, okay, those, those are areas, sometimes, uh, at the same time, you can also can uh, uh, say, uh, yeah, this is a gray area, I can do anything I want. You know? But those gray areas, we want to do it in a way that we can please God. You know? We feel comfortable, we have a conviction about it. Just like drinking alcohol. Some people uh, 
who has an alcoholic background, you know, they cannot touch even a little bit of alcohol. You know, I, I have no idea because, uh, you know, uh, uh, personally, I'm, I hope I'm not alcoholic. I like drinks, but, but I remember <laughs> one time I went to the States. I, I, and then one of my cousins who is living in Los Angeles, he's an alcoholic. I have no idea. He's the same age as me. So we went to Las Vegas and 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 then uh, and then they simply say, oh, he, sh he say I shouldn't drink. No problem, just one cup of beer, no problem. You know, I didn't know. He drink one cup, then he could not stop. <laughs> and then he's you know, after that he just say bad thing and I have no idea. You know, people who are alcoholic, they, they just cannot touch. You know, they have to work a hundred percent. So, but you know, is alcohol a, a sin to drink? No, it's not, you know. Uh, but some people, you know, they, they really have very strong conviction. They, they cannot drink. So everybody has different kind of uh, conviction, you know, view. So we need to be uh, accommodate every every view, you know, every different system we, we're gonna have. So, uh, so, so you know, I mean, uh, be sensitive. Okay, this uh, we are today we are talking about, you know. Uh, how to be patient and listen to one another. And that area is, the last area we're going to talk about is, if you talk to your disciple, advise him doing something, and he don't agree, how are you going to take it? He said, oh, in, in, especially in the area of opinion. Now, he said, I want, to take, I, I want to get a second opinion from a different person. And, uh, and as a good disciple, we should be you know, be open for that. But if we are not very open to that, then, then you know, we can, we can check on the heart. I, I, am I being uh, uh, too strong? You know, and, 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 and you know, we, we don't need to feel threatened by those. We, we need to welcome as long as it's godly. But sometimes, you know, people can use the second opinion thing as an excuse not to do what is right. They go asking for second and third and third, fourth and fifth and fifth. You know, and uh, until they got what they want, you know, that is also not correct. You know. So uh, having a second opinion is not wrong. You know, as long as they got the idea, they come back to you, you know, and talk through it. You know, if we are humble as a disciple, we work through things. You know, okay. Uh, if you don't think you agree in this area, and why you don't think uh, this is correct, you know, can you explain to me, you know, we can, we can, we can talk through, you know, we need to be humble about all this thing. So, in giving advice, you know, as a, we need to give a lot, that's what Bible teaches. But understand that uh, something is explicit, you know, something uh, implicit. And other things are just in the areas of opinion. So, this, we, as we get our time together with uh, one another, and we want to have all this principle, you know, put it into practice. You know, be a humble uh, disciple, be a patient uh, disciple to one another. And today there's a lot of things we cover, you know, actually. But if we cannot remember everything, don't worry. Please remember 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 23, 26. That really captured the hearts. I really like this one. So if we cannot remember anything much, please remember this one. You know, this is the best. And that this really captured the whole heart of discipling. And trusting God, speaking in truth and love, being patient and love one another, and help people to be more like Jesus. So that's all for the lesson on discipling. I hope you learn a lot. And the whole thing, seven months we have, if you cannot remember anything, remember this scripture and put it in practice. You will be a good disciple. All this I do. Amen. Wait, so uh, that's it for today and uh, and uh